Well, welcome to this week on Measures. Now, I have to admit that even by my standards, today's video is quite an unusual one. It's quite an unusual task. Most of the task is going to be involved in like the main part when we're doing the video. So there's a, a short extension which you can do at the end. We're going to explore some of the main ideas that underlie measurement. Um, so I'm really looking forward to seeing how you do that. We're going to understand why our measurement system works really well. What was it like before measurements existed? Um, and I can't wait to explore that. Now, of course, the stars of the show are mainly yourselves. Um, and we've, I've received so much unbelievable work. Um, so I want to start off by sharing a few of those things from the end of last week. Let's start today by celebrating some fantastic children and their amazing work. Have a look at this from Dylan. Ah, oh, it's such a joy when I see things like this. Do you remember? This was our consecutive numbers challenge here. Um, so you can see all of Dylan's examples here. It, up here he's got his going camping work. And then down here as well, finding factors of different numbers and how, how he's done that, how he can do it mentally and so on. Ah, oh, fabulous to see. And Dylan, it's brilliant having you involved. Um, also, I just got this email through, which was one of the most amazing emails I think I've ever received from Arlo. And I'm going to show you it in, in stages. Uh, and I love this, this kind of personal application of some of the things that we've done. So I decided to do the challenge with my clothes. So this was the combinations challenge. How many combinations of outfits can there be? I discovered that I could have, I've covered up how many different outfits. I did this by counting all my different clothes. Now, I have to say, this gave me a real shock um, when I saw. Anyway, th this was um, Arlo's clothes. Um, six pairs of trousers, uh, nine short sleeve tops and so on. Five long sleeve tops, five jumpers, um, 14 pairs of socks, eight pairs of pants and three pairs of shoes. Um, and then, well, how many possible outfits could there be? Well, look, Arlo has shown these workings for all these multiplications that were done. And then look at this number of possible outfits. 453,600 different ways you could get changed. Oh, it made me think, like, how long would it take getting ready in the morning if we thought about all the different ways we could get changed? Arlo, absolutely fantastic seeing how you've gone away and made this your own, and well done. Um, now, also, a big thank you and a big well done to Isabel. She noticed something. Um, this was the question that I wrote um, as part two um, on task A on Friday. I think of two numbers. When I multiply my numbers together, I get 24. When I add my numbers, I get more than 10. What could my numbers be? Um, and in the answers, I'd written um, six and four and eight and three. Um, now, Isabel noticed and told me fairly quickly, that's not right, Gareth. Um, pause the video. What did she notice? Well, Isabel had spotted that actually when you multiply six and four, you do get 24. But when you add those numbers, that is 10. It's, it's not more than 10. Um, so actually, I had to go back and I had to change that question. Now, I have to say, I'm not going to stop making mistakes. And the more children like Isabel that can find them and tell me, the better. So thank you so much. Well done. Um, and also, uh, just a bit of a shout out to one of our youngest mathematicians here, Jack from year one. He, he'd managed to find some different answers to that question. Uh, and also some amazing pictures too, as, as well as some other great work. So Jack, again, it's great to have you involved. Um, now today we are inventing measures. Um, and you're going to see why, why we're going to invent them. We're going to have a think about different measures. These are all measures for length that we're going to be looking at today. Why do we have the measures that we have? And what happened before we had them? Um, so it's, it's going to make us think and it's going to be really, really practical. Um, now, one, uh, we, we use some different things to measure length. Um, so sometimes we might use a measuring tape like this one. Sometimes we might use a trundle wheel. And sometimes we use a measuring stick, like a metre stick. Um, I've got part of a metre stick here. Um, and one thing I sometimes think is, well, why do we have these different kinds of measuring sticks? Why don't we have the same stick? You might, you might think about a situation where when it's better to use a trundle wheel uh, than a measuring tape. And why do we need a stick rather than a tape? Um, Anyway, what I really wanted to start with was, was this question. Just imagine, someone said, because they were finding it difficult converting between measures. So converting between centimetres and metres and kilometres and metres. 
So they decide this. From now on, let's just measure everything in metres. Won't that be easier? If we just measure everything in metres. Now, pause the video. Why would that be difficult? What would be not great about just using metres to measure everything? Okay, well, I wonder what you thought. Um, now, one of the things that I would suggest is this. It's some things, it's perfect to measure them in metres. But if you get something that's really, really small, it's very hard to measure it in metres with any accuracy. Or you get something that's enormous, um, like let's say the distance between where I live and maybe my nearest city. Well, it's really hard to imagine that in metres. So we often have different kinds of measurements. Let's explore this a little bit more. Um, let's say if I was to measure a giraffe, a giraffe, um, an adult giraffe might be 4.6 metres tall. Or I, if I was to measure the distance from where I live to Paris, um, that's about 600,000 metres. Or the width of a piece of thread. Now that is 0 0.00007 metres thick. Now what's wrong with that? What's wrong with doing that? Pause the video. Um, why, why can't I just measure everything in metres and describe everything in metres? Well, let's see if we can think about that. To me, 4.6 metres is, is about the right unit to measure a giraffe in. Uh, I can kind of imagine how big 4.6 metres is, but it's very difficult for me to imagine when numbers get really, really big, how, how big that actually is. I mean, if someone to say to me to estimate how far is 600,000 metres, I'd really have no idea. Um, so instead, we put that into kilometres. It's about 600 kilometres to Paris. Um, and again, like how big is 0 0.00007 metres? And that'd be so hard to measure in metres. So instead, I, I would tend to measure that in millimetres. And even then, it's not very many millimetres. It's 0 0.07 millimetres. But we need different types of measures to measure different sizes of things. Now, imagine a time before measures existed. So before there were centimetres and metres and kilometres and everyone knew how big they were. So for me, um, like I know that how big a metre is and that's the same as, as you. you. You know how big a metre is and we share an understanding of that. But actually there was a time before metres existed where different people didn't have one standard way of measuring things. And one thing that people used to do is they used to measure using the body parts. So like with a cubit, the length between your elbow and your fingertip or your hand or a foot or a pace or, or different ways of measuring using body parts. Now, now they're not quite ideal because like my cubit length might be a little bit different to yours, but that's what people used to use to have a kind of common way of measuring things. Now, we're going to do quite an unusual investigation um, today to expand on this. And you're going to invent your own measuring system using your body. We don't want anyone using normal measures. You're going to use your body. And I'm going to give you three things to measure. So I'm going to say measure three things and I will tell you what they are. But before we start, you have to agree on what are the different things, the different parts of your body that you're going to use to measure with. You're allowed up to three. So you can choose two or three things that you're going to measure with. Now, I'm not going to tell you yet what you're going to measure but before you do that, you're going to have to choose which parts of your body are you going to measure with and why. OK, pause the video and make those choices now. OK, now only if you've chosen which parts of your body you're going to use to measure, then play the video. And let me give you an example. So it could be that you could measure with a nail. And or the other thing you might choose to measure with is your cubit, this length from your elbow to your fingertip, or maybe it's with a, a big pace that you do. Now, here's the three things that I want you to go off now and measure. The height of a table, so any table, its height, and think which, which measure are you going to measure that in? Will you measure it in nails or cubits or paces or which of your measures will you use to measure with? The length of a pencil and the length of your widest room whether you're doing this in a school or in your house, uh, the widest room that you have. Okay, so go off and do that. Write it down. Think about which measurement are you going to use. Uh, pause the video and have a go at that. Okay. 
Okay, so that was probably quite a long pause when you went to go and do that. And, and I wonder which measurement you chose to use. So let's say if I was measuring the height of a table, I think I would do that in cubits um, for my tables. Whereas the length of a pencil, I would measure that in nails. And that's because the length of a pencil is a bit smaller. And cubits are, are actually bigger than a pencil. So I, I chose nails and then that's a, a, an easier way to understand its size. Whereas I wouldn't want to measure the length of my widest room in nails. That would take a long time. Instead, for that one, I'd used paces. Now, what I want you to do now is think of one of your things. And I want you to, to measure one of these three red things using both or two of your measures. Um, so it might be you decide, well, I'm going to measure the length of a pencil. and I'm going to measure it in these two measurements. Or maybe you think, no, it's the length of my widest room. I'm going to me measure it. I say in both of my measures, in at least two of your measures. Um, so uh, pause the video and have a go at that. Well, I wonder what you went for. I wonder which thing you measured in, in different units and which units you used to measure. Now, what I wanted to do is just talk a little bit about why I've asked you to do this. Um, now, in our measurement system, of course, we have centimetres for measuring smaller things and I guess millimetres for even smaller things. And then we've got metres to measure slightly bigger things and then kilometres for, for much longer things. And there are some things where it's fairly clear what I'd use to measure it in. So like, um, let, let's say if I was measuring the length of a pencil, I'd probably do that in centimetres. And then I can understand how big that is. It's quite easy to picture that. And, and I can measure it in centimetres. It's very hard to measure it in metres because a, a pencil is less than one when, it, when it's a metre. Um, so for a good measurement system, I need to have different sizes of measurements. I need some smaller things and some bigger things. Now, the other thing that's great about our, our system with centimetres and metres is it's a bit easier to convert between now, let's say you were measuring two of your things. You, you might have had to measure um, using cubits and paces. And then you've got to think, well, how many paces are the same as how many cubits? And it's quite hard converting them unless they measure exactly. But actually, with our metres and centimetres and our metric system, if we can multiply and divide by 10 and 100 and 1,000, then we can actually convert between measurements. So I could tell you how tall I was in centimetres. And if you knew how to how to multiply and divide by 100, you could convert centimetres to metres. It's one of the reasons why it's such a great system. Now, like I said in the, in the introduction, you might feel like you've gone far enough already actually on the video. But if you want a little extend task, here it is. Um, so the ha your hand span is the length between, if you really stretch your fingers out between your thumb, the tip of your thumb and the tip of your little finger. We talked about a cubit from an elbow to the edge of your um, fingers. And then your head circumference is measuring around your head. Okay, so for, for an, another little challenge, I want you to have a go at this if you feel that you, you're ready for that. Um, so first step is predict. So which do you think is longer, your cubit or your head circumference? Secondly, your cubit will be about the same length as how many hand spans. So predict that before you measure. Then measure your hand span, your cubit and your head circumference and work out how many centimetres they are. And then finally, compare them. So compare your predictions in step one, what you thought you'd find, to what you actually discovered in step two. There's one thing that for me was quite surprising. Um, and I wonder if you find that. Um, again, I hope you've really, really enjoyed today. I hope you've got a lot from it. We're going to extend from it and see why the activity you've done today is so helpful in understanding measures tomorrow. Um, I'm going to see you then.